Hi Stacey, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. How are you coping with the lockdown? Um, quite well, to, to be fair. Um, it, certainly in terms of the day to day, uh, I'm really lucky that my, my boyfriend Tim is helping me out with training. So he's holding pads for me and we've picked up a few bits of equipment off my coach and such. So that's good because it's given us, you know, a, a means to train and keep up my, I think, boxers you know we're used to that routine and without it we don't do so well do we so I'm lucky that I've still got you know a means to train and um I've got that as my focus the bigger picture obviously is um not great for boxing at the minute like any sport because we don't know when we're going to be back so that that is really difficult but you know within the context of things um I was going to ask you that how hard are you finding it to stay focused and what are you doing to I mean, stay I think, fit I think obviously this has happened to everyone all at once and everyone's got their individual uh you know things that were going on before it for me um i just had 18 months out after the commonwealth title with injury because i had a hand repair then had the knee surgery so you know I, I literally just had my medicals in january got my license back in february and was like raring to go and then this happened so it's massively disappointing but it's um you know that's what sport you know teaches you isn't it a way to get through stuff and stay positive stay focused and aim for your goals regardless of what's going on around about you and that's certainly one of the times when we've got to apply that resilience now it's a small world stacy because i was involved in your first bout uh, against katie smith i was helping katie at the time lovely girl katie um it was yeah, a she, very yeah. very tough bout what were your memories of that bout um first amateur i think I mean, the, the couple of weeks building up to it, I was incredibly nervous. I didn't, I don't think I realised how nervous I'd be. Um, but yeah, I was unbelievably nervous. But to be honest, on the day, it was the least nervous in a way. I just woke up and thought, right, this is, I've wanted, I've waited like so many years to be able to do this. Because as a kid, you know, it wasn't legal for women to box when I was first in the gym and that was, I was gutted. So I thought, you know, you've waited all this time don't let it pass you by by being too nervous like actually enjoy the occasion and finally getting to do what you love well, I, I started as a six or seven year old, but it wasn't legal for us to box, so I, I couldn't. So then that's why I went into football for many years and I just kept up with my boxing training alongside it. But yeah, I came to the actual competing side of it uh, much later for that reason. But, um, but yeah, on the actual day, I felt I felt good and, um, you know, I was lucky to have a lot of support there. And uh, yeah, it's like anybody, it's, I mean, it's just so tough once you get in there and you just really, really hope everything you've worked on you're going to remember something <laughs> now where did your amateur career go after that because i was a matchmaker at that time and i know how difficult it was to find opponents for katie and you must have had the same problems so uh, where did your career go yeah well um i think obviously we all entered the abas after that and, and then i started having to go abroad to some tournaments and then i started paying for some opponents from abroad to come over uh, to fight um, and really what was the the massive accelerator for me was when I got picked for the England team um, and started boxing at international level and that really sort of you know increased everything um, on every level really you know it it brought my level up it brought my level of training up the amount of bouts that I was getting the level of competition everything um, so that was a massive game changer for me yeah and um one thing that did interest me, that your dad did your corner, didn't he, in your first bout? Your dad, Eddie Copeland, obviously he's well-known throughout boxing in the North West. He's heavily involved. Uh, lovely bloke, your dad. Um, how did that relationship work on a boxing level? It was great for us. He was my coach throughout my whole amateur career. Obviously, when I boxed internationally, you have the, the Team GB or England coaches in your corner, but um, he was my coach for all of my amateur bouts. And uh, for us, it worked really well. I know for some uh, fathers and daughters or fathers and sons, it, it really doesn't work well. But for us, we were very fortunate that it was just a fantastic journey to both be on together. And boxing had very much been a, 
a big, big part of our relationships, you know, for me being a little kid. Um, and so to be able to do it for real um, and to get to do the things we did, like go to the national championships together and win a title together and all that was pretty incredible. Go abroad together. Um, it's just really, really special. I think we're very, very lucky um, to have had that time because, you know, those memories and those shared experiences could never be taken away. So, um, and it's lucky I had a similar style to him um, naturally because I'm not tall, I'm not gangly, I'm, I'm short and stocky like him. We tended to have the same style. So I think maybe that helps as well. Yeah. Uh, you got to high level at football as well, didn't you? Uh, how did boxing compare to football? Football being a team sport, boxing's quite a lonely sport at times, isn't it? Yeah, I think I haven't found uh, boxing to be that different in terms of the team bit, to be honest, just because nobody really trains in a gym on their own. Do you know what I mean? You, I mean, like cyclists or endurance runners, they literally do mile after mile, hour after hour on their own, like on the road, on the bike or, you know, whatever. Whereas we, we always tend to train with other people, certainly your coach is there and then your teammates. So I actually feel that you've got a team around you all the time. Um, obviously, once the bell goes, you, you, you're absolutely on your own. But even then, you're still supported and, the, you know, your, your coach is giving you information in between the rounds and all that. So, yeah, I haven't found that bit that much different. But I think the, the two things that I love about them is what makes them different. Like, the thing I love about football is that the actual competing part, once the whistle goes, you're all part of it together. Like, that whole team is going for that one same goal together and that's really nice in boxing it is just you but I like that personal challenge that it is on you to prepare properly train properly and then you know execute what you're supposed to do in, in the fight whatever the tactics are you've been given so I like the team element and the personal challenge of both really. See I'm a coach at Astley VIP and uh, it's the club side is the bit I enjoy the most more than the yeah. bounce because that's where the camaraderie is and the friendships and uh, I feel it's so sad sometimes when somebody loses a belt and then you just don't see them. And um, even if you stop boxing, it's good to stay part of that community, isn't it? I think what goes on in our community clubs, and I've said this a few times, I, I just don't feel we do a good enough job as a, as, a, as a sport from the top level right down of promoting just what a difference it makes in communities. Because I think a lot of people on the outside, they only see professional boxing, which is a very strange business. Um, and it doesn't look nice on the eye sometimes, you know, if some of these fights where, you know, it's a bit more in one's favour or whatever. In the amateurs, it's not like that. You know, mostly they're very well matched. There's a heavy emphasis on safety. And there's so much mentoring that goes on in those gyms every single night of the week where people like yourself are giving the time and energy and just unbelievable role models and mentors and support for these young men and women that are coming in that are often from totally different variety of backgrounds who need those positive role models in their life. And those conversations like, you know, you've just alluded to, when they lose and they're a bit upset, someone's sitting with them and saying, do you know what, it's okay and you did your best and we're proud of you. What a great lesson and, and praise and conversation to be having with a young person that they may never, ever have without that boxing gym environment. So it's incredible what clubs like yours and people like you do for young people. And I just don't think we promote that enough because those of us that are in it, we know that's happening and it is doing phenomenal stuff, but everyone else doesn't necessarily see the great things that boxing can bring, whether you compete or not. And where do you think female boxing is at the moment? Because when you started, Stacey, like I say, there wasn't many girls boxing. Well, now it's improved a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, there was literally nobody. When I was first going in the gym at six, seven years old, it was called uh, Breadbury Steelworks back then, my granddad's gym. And um, yeah, there, I mean, I went to all the shows every single week and there was just never any females there at all. Even watching, you didn't really get many, never mind boxing. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it was illegal at the time. So that was a pretty strong indicator of, you know, society's perception of whether we should be doing it or not. So to say that now we're at the point where, you know, we can compete at the Olympics in some weight categories, not all. Um, and that we've got, you know, women on the biggest professional shows at the moment is, is pretty remarkable it's still in its infancy obviously because it takes time to bring through you know each crop of top level fighters just like it does in the men's game but that's been happening for years um then there's no reason why it can't happen in the women's now that there's that pathway particularly with the international squads you know they're getting top level coaching nutrition strength and conditioning and all of that that 
you know, make makes you the athlete that you are that, that that's now in place for women just as it is for men. Yeah, and it, it's now you can name so many female top boxers, can't you? I mean, one of my favourites is Katie Taylor. If you're a boxing fan, you cannot not enjoy watching Katie Taylor box. Um, Chantelle Cameron's at Astley VIP. Uh, we train at the evening, but she trains during the day. Uh, she, yeah. She'd be a good challenge for Katie. Absolutely. So many, I mean, I know from the... Um, we were at some of the, obviously, the European and the Worlds together and we've sparred together as pros as well. And, uh, yeah, she's, um, she's a really exciting fighter. And she really does have that mindset where she'll fight anyone. I know a lot of people say it, but they don't actually mean it. She will. Um, mm. So, yeah, she's some and I think now, now she's with Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis. Um, it's, she's going to be in a happy environment and that's the best way to be as an athlete. You can get the best out of yourself then. And I yeah, think that's gonna and I'm a big Katie Taylor fan, but... Uh, Chantel's strength could give uh, Katie a lot of problems, I think. Yeah, it's, it's just going to be an exciting fight. And this, this, is, this is what we need now. We need these domestic and international rivalries where there's fights that people are interested in. And that they go, yeah. like Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas will be. You know, uh, they've both come through extremely different routes to get where they are. But what a great fight, you know. Southpaw, orthodox, totally different styles, different background. Um, exciting, going to be a really exciting uh, fight. And like I said, that's what we need, Pe things to catch people's imagination and say, oh, I want to see how that goes and who wins. That, yeah. That's the kind of thing we need. And it was such a shame because that bill, that where there was a lot of top female boxers on, wasn't there? Was it Don Caster, I think it was supposed to Shannon, be? Shannon Courtney was on it as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a real shame for female boxing because it was done. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. And like I say, it's, it is difficult at the minute because I'm really fortunate I can train every day and I've got someone to support with my training and a bit of equipment and stuff. Um, what's, what's next for Stacey Coldwood now? In terms of boxing, I just, you know, I, I, I really, really want the chance to have a shot at a world title and it's certainly been uh, a very, very treacherous road to, to get to it, you know, because it's... Lots of things have happened, you know, there was, there's been fights like the one at Middleton Arena where, you know, 10 minutes before I was due to walk out, there'd been a stabbing in the lobby and the whole thing got pulled and then we had eight weeks to get rid of his Zimbabwe for the Commonwealth title and then I had two surgeries and now there's a pandemic, so it's like, oh my God, what, what more's got to happen? But hopefully I can, I can still just have that, that last shot and then, then it'll be uh, retirement after that because, you know, my body's getting too old to keep putting itself through this now after many 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 years of, of sport so it'll be the right time but before that there is that one thing that I'd really like to achieve. Would you consider going into coaching after that? I mean you look you're such a positive role model you look set for England boxing or something that route? Yeah no I don't think I would I mean I, I love doing stuff with like the the younguns, you know, and um, I'd, I'd go in a school one day a week. I work at a school one day a week where I, where I used to be full time, and one day a week now, and um, we do like a boxing project with the kids there. I love that. I love doing stuff with beginners or you know helping people in that way. But in terms of you know developing talent, it's not it's not my passion or my interest. But um, but certainly just helping people out through sport. Um, if that means involves a bit of coaching and teaching the basics, I love doing that, you know, but not, yeah, not to actually coach for development. Yeah. And does it concern you? You, you see a lot of boxers struggle when they stop boxing. Uh, do you yeah. think you'll have a, that could be an issue or because sport's been a big part of your life throughout your life. Hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a really, really good question. And um, up to, I'd say the last couple of, like maybe the last year, um, that, that answer's changed because I think at any point in my life past the last 12 months, I would have said that was my probably my biggest fear in my life, finishing sport and retiring. Um, I had absolutely no idea how I would feel okay without sport being front and centre and everything, and everything revolving around it in my life as a competitor. Um, I just couldn't see a life that I'd particularly thriving or want or be happy and without it but now over the last 12 months I have to say that that's gradually changed and I do you know I do see a, a future now without um, competing in sport um, which is not to say I'm not you know I'm still just as committed to reaching that final goal if I can but after that I'm not frightened of that you know 
uh, transition. Whereas I was before, it just was something I didn't even want to think about. But now I'm, I, f I feel a lot more content with it, and I, you know, I can see how it could be okay. Yeah. And finally, Stacey, um, what would you say to a young girl or, or older woman who was thinking of trying boxing? Uh, what would you say about the sport? What advice? Um, just to, um, I, I think there's two different sides. I think if they're just doing it, like just to try it for fitness, um, then I'd say just just go for it, you know. But I, I think if you're trying to compete, then I'd say, you know, if you're going to compete, then you really need to commit yourself 100%. Because when when you're in a minority of anything, if, if, you, if you're not doing a good job of it, people judge the entire sport. So they won't say, if they see a rubbish women's bout, they don't go, Oh, that, that wasn't a good bout. They'll say women's boxing is rubbish at the minute. Whereas if you see a rubbish men's bout, you'll just go, oh, that wasn't a good fight. So we're representing everyone in the sport at the minute because it's still in its infancy. So we really need to be the very best we can be. And at least if you're not technically sound yet, because that takes a long time, at least your fitness and, and your application should be there. Um, so I'd say if you're going to compete, be the very best that you can be. And in terms of whether you're doing it recreationally or you know, with a view to competing, I'd say just don't settle for the first gym you go in if it doesn't feel right. If it's not a positive environment, if it's not a coach who brings out the best in you, makes you feel good, then go somewhere else. Don't just give up on the sport. And I'd say that to, you know, the, the same to any, you know, boys or girls, men or women. You do hear about them going in these clubs and it's not the right environment for them and they just don't try it again. I'd say there can be a big difference. Generally speaking, boxing community is a great community with good people. But there can be sometimes you might go and there might be a coach who's just not your cup of tea. That's going to happen. Go somewhere else and keep trying it until you find the right environment for you because the, there's something different for everyone and it's not a reason not to do the sport. And there's just so much it can bring to your life. There's nothing quite like boxing uh, for testing your metal. <laughs> and I think that's I, always, I always say that to, to boxers. Sometimes it's not a, a popular thing to say, but I say if you're not happy at a club, move on. Because the minute Absolutely. you stop listening to a coach, you're wasting your time there. You've not got their respect yeah. and uh, it's time to move on. Better for you, better for them. Yeah, and I mean, just look at what it brings to people's lives. I mean, I talk to people now when I'm out and about and, you know, I do a lot of public speaking and sometimes I'll be in businesses and there's somebody who'll come up and now they've got some whatever job and they're like much older and they'll say, oh, I remember going in this gym when I was 10 and they've got all these stories from like 30, 40 years ago that are so vivid in their mind of that time when they had to go up boxing. It, it, you know, it, it impacts people and they might never been near a gym again, but they remember what, what the lessons that they learned and how it felt and how it helped shape them. Those, you know, those times that they were part of a boxing club and it has a massive impact on people's lives. It gives you so much that you can apply to other things in your life. Um, that I think it's just a really, you know, valuable thing to have had so to be put off just by not quite finding the right environment first I think is a shame um because you, you'll know yourself so they stick them in with someone who's a bit heavy-handed for them for the first spar or whatever you know when they get a bit put off and you know you just got to try somewhere else and find the right place for you because there's that that much of a positive you can get from it it's uh, too much to miss out on yeah well thanks very much for that Stacey and all the best with your career you you made for positive speaking you're definitely a role model for young girls young boys all to uh, you're on instagram aren't you to follow um it's very i, I wish you nothing but the best thank you very much and thanks for doing these i hope that they're uh, keeping everyone positive and stuff i'm sure they are so thanks for what you're doing and uh, a big hello to everyone at Ashley vip as well i hope everyone's doing well